Today I'm going to share 11 EQ mistakes that I've made over the years. By sharing these mistakes that I've made in the past and continue to make to this day, I hope that you can learn from my experiences and avoid wasting time yourself. So if you want to learn how to use EQ with confidence, keep watching. From dust to dust, the the first mistake that I want to share with you is that I used fully parametric EQ for way too long before I considered using other forms of EQ. Now, I'm not slating fully parametric EQ. It's great for finding resonances to cut, for subtractive EQ, for surgical application. So I could just add a boost here, sweep around until I find a room resonance on this vocal. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love don't come easy. Easy this time. You made a bad man out of me, and I can hardly breathe. Cause I need your love, your love and touch, your love and please. And that just cleans it up a bit. But what if we want to start applying quite heavy tonal EQ? So we want to boost the upper mids quite a bit and we want to boost the top end and then we want to add a low cut. And what if this was a snare or something that we wanted to process really heavily so we wanted to add loads more crack and we maybe we wanted to actually taper off the high end a bit well when you're working with a fully parametric eq like this sometimes this can be quite off-putting you feel like you need this much eq to get what you want but then when you look at it you're like whoa that looks like way too much i'm going over the top here add to that the fact that you've got a spectrum analyzer here which can be really handy but other times can mislead you there are downsides to having this much visual information so for a while i started using analog modeling EQs like this. Slick EQ is great and it's free, so if you don't have one in your door, you can give this a try. And the benefit here is that we've just got a few knobs, so you're forced to use your ears. In a particular mix, that often ends in a better end result, but over time, it forces you to train your ears more because you're relying on them and not visual information. So for a couple of years, my main EQ was an analog modeling EQ like this, and that really helped me to progress faster. Nowadays, my go-to EQ is the FabFilter EQ, which is fully parametric, but going through that learning experience of using a lot of analog EQs was really helpful for me. The second mistake I want to share with you is that I never thought I'd be able to identify frequencies by ear, so I never bothered to even train. I thought it was something you were born with, like perfect pitch, but that's not true. Now I can identify frequencies by ear, and that's really helpful because you can just listen to a mix and identify issues. For example, let's take a listen to this track that's just had a rough balance, nothing else. You made a bad man out of me I kinda lost my mind Now love don't come easy Easy this time Already, all of these issues are jumping out at me. And I could say that the electric guitar sounds a bit too pokey. That's maybe around 1K. The acoustic guitar sounds a bit too sizzly and thin. So we probably need to tame maybe around 4K. The snare sounded a bit boxy. So maybe we could cut the lower mids around three, 400 hertz. Now, I'm sure most of those frequencies won't be 100% accurate, but it gives me a starting point to then figure it out. It took me 12 years to get to the point where I'm comfortable doing that. And that's because I never tried to learn that sooner. I highly recommend you use a service like soundgym.co or quiz tones to start testing your ears and developing your hearing abilities because you can definitely do that in a matter of months if you actually go and try to do it. Third mistake that I want to share with you is that I used to use way too much EQ on vocals. Now this applies mostly to the genres that I tend to work with like rock and pop. And what I found was when you're EQ in a vocal and you're trying to get it to sound the way you want. So you start playing around with EQ and you're like, hmm, I want this vocal to sound more aggressive, brighter. And we could just do something like that. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love don't come easy. You made a bad man out of me and I can hardly breathe. And maybe this is a step in the direction that we wanted to go, but it's just too much. In most cases I find that when I apply too much EQ to the vocals, it just starts to get worse. It's kind of a rabbit hole and then it sounds worse, so I add more EQ to try and fix it, and then suddenly I've got four different EQs, and I found that was a big issue that I had to overcome by trying to be more careful with how I EQ'd vocals and more selective about which frequencies I boosted and cut and by how much. The fourth mistake that I made was that I tried to finish whole mixes, entire mixes with only subtractive EQ, and I did that for a long time because I read online that it was the best way to mix. 
Now, if that's how you mix and it works for you, that's absolutely fine. But personally, I just couldn't do it. And I get much better results when I combine subtractive and additive EQ. And often when I have an intention, like I want to make something sound brighter, I can't do it with subtractive EQ alone. I have to use a high shelf or something like that to boost to, to get that sound. And that's the way I do it. And if you're struggling with subtractive EQ, I recommend you just kind of forget that for some time. Try not worrying about whether you're using subtractive or additive and see if that works for you. Nowadays, I tend to use subtractive EQ first to clean up the source. So I might even do that in the prep phase. So I'll go on the vocal and I'll find rim resonances like you saw me do before. Maybe I'll cut out some of the low end, see if there's some harshness in the upper mid range I can remove. And once we've done that, I'll then use a separate EQ, maybe uh, even a different equalizer, something like an analog modeling EQ, like the slick EQ, just to shape the tone. And that's when I start to use additive EQ. So I'll add some high end. Maybe I'll add uh, some presence in the upper mids, as well as maybe scooping the lower mids a bit. So there's still lots of subtractive EQ going on, probably more than additive EQ, but it's the combination of them that works best for me. The most important thing is to have an intention and then whether you have to use subtractive or additive EQ to get there, it doesn't matter. And that leads me on to the fifth mistake that I want to share, which is that I often used EQ because I thought I had to. I knew EQ was important, so I'd load it on every channel and just play around until I thought I'd done the right thing. But that's not the right way to approach it. Instead, I recommend you have an intention with every single move. Just think, what are you trying to achieve with the equalizer before you load it up? Why do you need an equalizer? Because you probably don't need one in a lot of cases. Once you've answered those questions, what you're trying to do, why you're trying to do it, then it's easy because you know how you're going to use that equalizer, what you need to dial in. Now, you do need trained ears for this, or at least that helps. So that goes back to that earlier mistake of not thinking I could do that. So combining intentional EQ with a bit of ear training is going to accelerate your progress so much. Mistake number six is that I ignored the mix bus for probably the first five or six years as a mixer. If there's an issue with the whole mix, like the whole mix is just sounding a bit muddy or the whole mix needs more top end, then when you do it on the mix bus, and this is often the first thing I do after balancing, I'll go on here and I'll just see what the mix needs. If I can subtly nudge it in the right direction and save time later on. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love don't come easy. Easy to stop. You made a bad man out of me. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love don't come easy. You made a bad man out of me And I can hardly breathe Cause I need a love, your love and touch so we're just trying to subtly nudge the mix in the right direction. And this is going to increase your confidence because now the mix is already sounding better. It's going to save you time later on. And I like to do these big broad sweeps early on in the mix. How can we look at the mix as a whole and fix issues with the entire mix and see it as a more musical cohesive thing rather than diving straight in with something like how the kick drum sounds. So don't be afraid to use EQ on your mix bus, on group buses, anywhere in your door. Mistake number seven is that I did all EQ in solo. Now, I still do quite a lot of EQ in solo as part of the prep phase. So like I said, I'll go to the vocal and I'll find any room resonances and cut them out. However, once I've started mixing and I'm making more tonal decisions, I'm trying to make a snare sit better in the mix or I'm trying to bring out the vocal more by boosting the upper mid range. Well, all of those things depend entirely on the context of the mix. So I find it helps to not solo the channel. If you struggle with that, then let's say you're EQ in the guitar and you can't really hear it in the mix. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love. Well, what you can do is just turn it up because then you still have the context, but you can hear that channel more easily. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. Now love don't come easy. Easy to stop. You made a bad man out of me. And I can hide me. And then we can just drop it back down to the point we want it. You made a bad man out of me. I kind of lost my mind. 
now love don't come easy, easy to start. Ultimately, I think that's a much better option if you're struggling to EQ something than soloing. Mistake number eight is that I often avoided being too aggressive because I thought that it was all about adding, you know, two dB boost here and one dB there. But again, it comes back to this idea of intention. If you have an intention and the snare just really needs so much more crack or aggression in the upper mid range to cut through the mix and sound the way you want it to sound, then if you have to add 7 dB, then that's fine. Mistake number nine is that I bought a lot of plugins. I probably have at least 20 different EQs that I could go for in a mix. And that was really overwhelming at times. I wouldn't know which to use. When should I use a Poltec versus a fully parametric EQ? Ultimately, I think it's best to have one go-to plugin that you use most of the time. And you can always have your other EQs with a bit more character for special situations. But for me, I now use the FabFilter Pro Q2 in most situations. And that saves me time in the mix. I don't have to think, oh, which plugin am I gonna go for? And also it saves me money. I'm trying not to buy more EQs in the sales. It saves me time because I'm not having to learn how to use those EQs. And in the heat of the mix, I don't have to waste time deciding which EQ to use. I just reach for my go-to. So that works really well for me. And I recommend you give that a go-to. Mistake number 10 is that I never volume matched an equalizer. And this is smaller, this isn't as problematic, but the idea here is that we want to bypass the EQ once we've applied it to see if it's actually making an improvement. So if we just solo this acoustic now for the sake of demonstration, let's compare before and after. So you can hear there's a bit of a volume loss because we're cutting mostly with this EQ. So we need to compensate that. So when we bypass it to check it actually sounds better in the mix, it's staying at the same volume because otherwise that change in volume can trick us into thinking it's better or worse. So let's figure that out. You made a bad man out of me I kinda lost my mind Now love don't come easy Easy to stop You made a bad man out of me And I can hardly breathe Cause I need your love Your love and touch Your love and so now we can accurately bypass it, re-engage it to see if we actually like the difference that's making. And I do like how that sits better in the mix. It's playing a more supportive role here. So it sits a bit further back. It sounds a bit less harsh. It's not poking out as much. So I would be happy to move forward with that. And then finally, mistake number 11, perhaps the biggest of all, is that I thought there was a secret to using EQ that I didn't understand. I thought there was more to it. I thought there were techniques and strategies that I just couldn't fathom. But of course, the real situation was that I think it's easy to overthink EQ and you can spend all day trying to obsess over, oh, is this the right frequency to cut or boost? Or am I boosting or cutting this frequency by the right amount? But ultimately it's about having an intention trying to achieve it and then when you're happy with that moving on and not obsessing over it otherwise you can spend hours just EQing one element of the mix when in reality you should try to focus on the bigger picture and focus on the mix as a whole rather than getting lost in these small details like tweaking between let's say 2700 hertz and 3350 hertz like yeah it's going to make a difference of course and if you're a professional then that's probably going to be an important difference but if you're just a musician who makes their own music and you're 
push for time and you're still learning, then don't obsess over those small differences. Just get in the right ballpark and then move on with confidence onto the next thing that you need to focus on. Because there is no secret answer. There is no right or wrong. It's all completely subjective. So just have more confidence in yourself. And once I start to have more confidence in myself and my own decisions, my mix is improved. So there you go, 11 EQ mistakes that I've made over the years and continue to make. If you want to learn more about EQ and the strategy behind it and you want to use it with more confidence, then I recommend you download our free EQ cheat sheet. There's a link in the description or a link on screen now. It's completely free and we've got loads of good information in there. So that's it from me, slightly different style of video this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week and remember, create regardless. Thank you.